This is James Holder for iFilm London. I'm in Canning Town at the Peacock Gym today on the set of brand new British feature film, Vendetta. With me, I've got the director and writer of Vendetta, Stephen Reynolds, all right, Steve? Yeah, yeah I'm good, mate, you? Yeah, I'm very well, mate. I say thank you for having us down on your set, and it's a great pleasure to meet you. That's all right, you're welcome. You're welcome to the set, yeah. How far in are we on the shoot now? Uh, we're about halfway through now. Um, we're, we're a day away from being halfway through. We've got three weeks to shoot this movie. And... Um, yeah, we're flying, we're flying, good pace, and uh, we're getting through it. This is your directorial debut, um, having wrote, uh, notably, the Rise and Fall of the Essex Boys. Fall of the Essex Boys, Fall of the Essex yeah, Boys. Yeah. that was one of yours. Mm. Uh, how have you taken to the directing? Um, I'm better at directing than writing, apparently, I've been told. So, um, it, it, um, I prefer it. I, I like both. Uh, writing and directing are two, two very different um, there's, a, there's a different approach to each of them uh, in a big way. Writing, you're in a room and you're on your own. It's a bit lonely. Directing's on completely opposite scale. So you've got people to work with and you need to figure out how to get the best out of people and articulate what you want and you know pass that vision over. So they're both very, very different. Um, but uh, I love it. So it's, you know, it, comes, it comes relatively uh, naturally because I love it. So it, you know, it's, yeah, I love it. You're working in this film with notably a couple of massive names as well as a few very established British actors. What's the direction like? How, how do you direct someone like Danny Dyer? What, what would you say to him? I mean, the good thing about Danny is that he's, he's an, an immensely approachable actor um, and he's incredibly focused. And the one good thing about this film is that he, he, he loved the script and that's always very helpful, helpful from the outset. Um, and I didn't really know what to make of him. I'd never met him. I always liked him as an actor. Um, and always wanted to work with him. And I'm not just saying that, it was, it was an ongoing joke in our house that one day I'd direct Danny and something. And it went on for ages and we came close a couple of times um, and it just didn't happen. Um, but he loved the script and we sat down and we talked about how I was going to approach it, how he was going to approach it. And we kind of just got onto the same page straight away. Um, he was hungry to make something um, as as uh, multi-layered um, in, in terms of the narrative, uh, a film with lots of characterization and uh, uh, kind of a bit high concept as well. So he wanted to do that, I wanted to do that. And so we got onto the same page very quickly. So he has been extremely easy to direct. You know, sometimes as a first time director, you go into these films and you think that the, the, you know, the star is going to bully the director and run the show. And he hasn't been like that at all because he has really trusted me and I needed him to trust me from the get-go um, that I was going to deliver a film that he would be extremely good in and a role that he could handle um, <clears throat> and take him up a level. Because I know how um, deep down I know that he is an exceptional actor, you know, and you see that when you're talking to him. I know people see interviews and stuff like that, and I don't think they really get who the, the real Danny is or what he's capable of as, a, as an actor. And it's my job to come in and, and really bring that out. And we, I'm starting to see that as the days are going on, we're really just bringing him in um, <coughs> into this character. And he is just, you know, embodying the, the Jimmy Vickers uh, character, which is what the, the, the lead name is. So, uh, no, he's, he's been amazing. Yeah, watching your set today and watching people in character, watching them act, it must be fantastic for you to see all this coming together and into fruition as you've actually sat there and wrote Vendetta as a as a screenplay. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's very. I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed actually because on on a film um, of this sort of budget, you don't get sets. And I mean, if 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 you turn around behind you now, you would see that it looks kind of like that we're in like a flat or something like that, but then there's just, we're in a warehouse and it's been built by an amazing production designer and his team, Anthony Neal. And he has literally just built this flat because I made it clear from day one that there is a shootout in here and we can't really be doing that on, 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 on a real residential sort of flat or an apartment um, because we're just not gonna get that. I wanted walls going in and, and guns going off and it was going to be a very, a very uh, aggressive and colourful and violent um, sequence. And so when I talked to him about that, he was like, we've got to build that set. And I went, it's not, you know, we're not going to be able to do that on this budget. So we were looking for locations and looking for locations. And um, he went, I'll build it. And I've gradually seen this take shape. And we've just literally shot the crap out of it today. 
and it and it looked amazing, you know. I've had the pleasure to work on purpose built sets before and as I say, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. Mm. Looking at it on camera, you wouldn't you wouldn't know that we was we wasn't yeah. in someone's hopefully someone's not. house. Ho hopefully, you know, we, we will give off that illusion. And what's important to me is coming in as a filmmaker is I've never really been a big fan of things like uh, VFX and, and and CG and as uh, where we can and as much as we can I like to do as much in the camera as possible. You kind of don't really have the luxury of big sort of uh, computer effects anyway with a, bu with a budget this big, but you certainly uh, don't have a set to build. So so for us to have that, it's, it's been a real luxury. So I wanted to make sure that today, or this morning, like we shot a gunfight in uh, in half a day and we got everything we needed just before lunch. Um, and it's a great little gun fight. Oh, great, it's Tiffany Thompson today, though, playing playing the role. Yeah, she was she, uh, the role of Katie. Yeah, yeah, she was amazing, and she came in, and 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 we needed to have her do what she needed to do in kind of one take, uh, which is basically fire the gun. Because what we're doing is is doing a lot of live stuff. So we will have people getting shot, but we'll, then we'll be over the shoulder of Danny, and we'll see him shooting them. So when he's firing his blanks, their squibs are going off at the same time. Because I wanted to create this ultra real world. Um, where we're where we're in the movie, you know, the audience really is going on this ride with us, and we want to be there. So if you see someone firing a gun, you're over their shoulder, and you're seeing the guy get hit on the other end of it. So we wanted to do that with with Tiffany as well, and she fires around, gets shot, and then we've got this squib that just and the blood goes off her, and she completely. She just nailed it, you know, she needed to fire three guns, she needed to have a beat, she needed to hit her dialogue, and then she needed to fire the other gun, and then she, you know, the other, the other bullet, and then she needed to get shot and her head go back. She's perfect, her timing was unbelievable, she didn't want to take, it's good. Having wrote other feature films, I think screenplays in the past, now going into directing, do you think that gave you a little hindsight of some of the pitfalls you could expect as a director? Because I know as a writer, you surely must have seen other, other, your other projects come to life slowly, sure, slowly. Sure. Um, no, not really. I, I, I always... Um, uh, I mean, what do you mean? As in... As in, as in terms of... Um, Seeing my other screenplays come to life and, and thinking how would I have done that better maybe and, and getting that chance with Vendetta. If there were certain things that were done maybe differently in other films, sure, sure. just learn from them, that overall yeah, experience. I mean, essentially with The Fall of the Essex Boys, that was a script that I was asked to write. I was asked, it to, write, asked to write it a certain way um, and then it was going to be handed over to the directors and the producers to then do what they wanted with it. I knew that and I can still be... You know, I can still work as a writer and then give my work over and let them do what they want with it. It's, it's, it's. I know other writer friends of mine find that quite difficult, but I can. It must be quite a traumatic experience writing something, guiding it through, growing yeah. it, nurturing it, and lead, to hand it over to someone else to take the reins. Yeah, do you know what it isn't if you know from day one? So if you know from day one that, that you're never going to direct that film, that's okay because you detach from it straight away. So you can get so close to it as a writer. And then when it's time, you know, because I need to look at that from the perspective of if I was another director and I was maybe taking on someone's script, you know, I need to be able to think in that mindset and be able to know that you know that writer can hand that over because there's, no, there's nothing worse than a precious writer you know it, it, it makes it all very difficult so I wrote that handed it over and um, kind of did what they wanted because it was you know it was ba there's only so much you can do with a film like that because it's essentially kind of based on a on a you know a, a true event or, or the events leading up to this true event and so uh, as long as I know that I can detach as a writer but with Vendetta I was always I always knew I was going to direct it because it was the conversation that me and Jonathan had so I think if further down the line I'd written Vendetta, knowing I was going to direct it, and then saying, "Oh, someone else is going to direct that," then I probably would have been a bit more heartbroken because I was, you know, was starting to pre-visualise it as I'm writing it harder than I would pre-visualise a script that I'd written and that I'm not going to direct. If that makes sense, so your mind is already starting to see, you know, the textures and the colours and the grit and the, and the grime that you want to try and. Bring That's something to you it. think about a lot the color palette of a film i love the word color palette in terms <laughs> of in terms of the whole overall sure, ethos sure, of the film the, sure. you know yeah totally i mean it, it it for me it all comes down to textures but it depends on um I'm, i mean for me i'm always talking with hayda my uh, director of photography who's unbelievable and 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 um, he's really brought this to life for me and I, I will usually have that conversation with him and, and we did at the beginning but and I've always said to him the script needs to dictate the style so if we do have a little bit of action because essentially he was like you know do you want this to be handheld do you want it to have a handheld feel do you want to have to you know a very um, sort of locked off sort of wide lots of wides how do you want to shoot it and we got into a dialogue of um, 
I, I really like, I like a mixture of everything, but like I said to you, it, the script needs to dictate what happens and when. So if we've got an amazing shoot out here, we don't want to be shooting it, we're just locked off wide, it's going to feel a little bit flat. It's energetic, it's moving, it needs to be handheld, it needs to be messy. Um, and, in you know, in terms of colours, um, it needs to have that kind of very, very warm um, interior house feel. Um, so, so it's got to have a lot of that going on. And then obviously when you're outside, so, so Vendetta is going to have a lot of mixtures going on. You know, we've got the kind of cold streets, grey, you know, um, grey feeling uh, streets of... Of, of London. East Desolate London. streets of East London. Desolate, yeah, yeah. Um, but essentially, one thing for me with this movie is that I want London to play a role in the movie. You know, when you see films uh, like Collateral or, or, you know, Michael Mann has a, an exceptional way of, of making LA feel like a character in the movie. And I've always been a big fan of these kind of... Um, you know, metropolis and, and, and big cities like Hong Kong and New York. And London's got a little bit of that going on, but it's got this, you know, beautiful multi-blend of kind of, you know, modern contemporary architecture with stuff like the Shard. And then you've got stuff like, you know, St. Paul's Cathedral and this beautiful um, um, blend of, you know, um, of, of uh, different, different buildings from different ages. And I really want to try and capture that uh, as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen, I want to thank you for having us on your film today. Um, the last thing I want to ask you is, obviously, Jonathan Softcott, Billy Murray, they're producing a lot of films. Sure. Is there anything you can tell us about in the future, so maybe something you're writing or something that's going, going through your mind at the moment? Um, no. It's all top secret. Listen, I like secrets. Secrets are good. <laughs> Cheers, Billy. Yeah, anytime. Listen, I want to thank you again for having us here today. It's honestly my pleasure to have a look around your set, and I wish you the best of luck with the film, and I'm hoping it goes cinemas nationwide. Thank you. Cheers. I hope so too. This is James Helder with director Stephen Reynolds for iFilm London. Thank you for watching.